painting party. This ain't your daddy's painting class. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Mary Houlihan. What's up? It's Mary Houlihan. Yeah, baby. There's something about Mary. Mary Houlihan. Yeah, bitch. Another scorcher. Cool. Hello. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hey, y'all. Slappy Phil. Hi, Butts Janitals. Hi, Lee. Hi, LED Light. Hi, Emily Pineapple. Ooh, another scorcher. Like yesterday. Yesterday? Yesterday you said you'd call Sears. Another scorcher. Cool. <laughs> Hello, potatoes. Hello, thing from the void. Hello, Alice. Alice in the house. Noah in the house. All right. I've okay. Now it's a party. Pretty cool. Well, welcome to the terrific show. Wait, check this out. Hi, happy. Hi. Hi, Babu. Hello. Hello. Okay, how about I gotta I gotta move this over so you can see my little pooch a little better. Okay, something like that, I think. And then get close and move my body closer. Okay. Yeah, I think this is the perfect setup. Hello! Welcome to Mary Houlihan's Painting Party, the only show in the world where you're allowed to paint. Yup. Nobody thought of it, and then we said, somebody's gotta do something about this. And then I said, honey, honey, would it be crazy if I ran for mayor? And my wife, she said, there's nothing crazy about that. And now we have a show where we get to paint on Twitch. Yep. That's how it happened. <laughs> you know, you know, I really got egg on my face because I'm out of palette paper. I'm out of palette paper. I have this one. I'm going to keep using every last bit of this. Maybe... This might be hashtag oddly satisfying. Maybe peel off some of these little guys. Oh, yeah, it comes right off. You gotta be careful when peeling off the little guys because sometimes they're still wet and then you, your fingers turn colors. That's what you have to be careful of. Anyways, if you've never seen the show before, welcome. The whole thing is I paint and you paint also and we all chat in the comments about like how we're doing and stuff and like funny riffs dare I say and you try to make a painting or drawing during the show and then you share it online with our little hashtag we made and then we screen share it. So we'll be refreshing Twitter, looking at the hashtag, and if you don't have Twitter, you can post your art somewhere else, and just let us know in the comments, hey, I posted something on Insta with the hashtag, or hey, I emailed the um, a picture of my art to the show email. What's the show email? Funny, you should ask. It's actually Mary Houlihan XOXO at gmail.com. And that's pretty much how the show works, boo. You can also just chat and not paint like Blogtoven. Which I think now more than ever is so important. Sometimes it's important just to chat. But if you do do viewer art, it might look a little something like this from Sir Ive. Oh! Boo! 
is so cute. Oh, I love this. So yes, the theme today, if you haven't heard already, is Paul Rubens. Most famously known as his character, Pee Wee Herman. So I'm going to paint Pee Wee. I'm expecting probably a lot of people painting Pee Wee or I saw some like hot pics of him when he was uh, like a young student. Maybe someone will do one of those. I mean, some of these pics, hunk alert. He's such a, a funny cutie as Pee Wee that you kind of don't realize that put on some hunk clothes and the guy looks like a hunk. Um, okay, let me put some crapola on my palette. And by crapola, I mean paint, of course. Oh, that's such a good idea. A secret word. Okay. Okay. Okay, hold on. Where's um a little piece of paper? Okay, a secret word is online this past week of course on insta i reposted that clip of him and dolly and i saw another clip where it was uh what was it maybe it was paul i forget who was talking someone was they were talking about like writing the theme song for Pee Wee's Playhouse. Um, and I guess Mark Mothersbaugh wrote it or co-wrote it. And Cindy Lauper sang it. And then she, you know, put on this little baby kind of Betty Boop kind of voice. seen some you know pics of him with other celebs when before they were stars style I saw David Hasselhoff posted one of the two of them when they were in college at Cal Arts and similar one Katie Sagal posing with him when they were students I didn't realize that uh, Paul Rubens and David Hasselhoff were roommates. Isn't that so cute? Wow. Yeah. And... I guess David Hasselhoff obviously looked like a total 
model hunk in the pick of them. Baywatch style. Well, you know, before Baywatch, but he looks so like young and male model-y and they just look like good pals. And he wrote a cute caption of just, you know, he was a nice supportive friend. And just not so many cute memories all these people were posting. Right? Here's the full picture. How cute is that? That is so cute. Hmm. Do I need any more colors? Maybe that's all the colors I need. We've actually already gotten even more viewer art. Shut the front door. From Slappy Phil, this is Paul oh. Rubin's Rubin. Oh, that's very cute. <laughs> and then Butt's Janitals can't paint tonight, but made a wood bow tie for Pee Wee in the wood shop earlier today. That's so cutie. Wow. Talented audience alert. Me think yes. Okay. Well. Hmm. Ah! <laughs> ah! You said the secret word. Secret word was dinner. to say it I hate to say it but there was a little bit more fighting at beauty school today oh no yep mm -hmm. you know not not knock down drag out but someone um, did say to someone else you know to shut the hell up or whatever uh, you know stop talking to me or I can't remember exactly what she said, but everyone was like, whoa. And Miss Evie was not with us at the time. Um, we were having a lesson with Miss V. Mm-hmm. And Miss, Miss V... She, she doesn't really play like that. Mm -mm. You know, with the disrespect, she does not play with that. Miss Evie is a little more like, yo, knock it off. 
But Miss V, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe she gonna try to get some disciplinary action or something. I, you know, I think she's more. And at this point, and at this point, it is kind of the same girl every time. It is kind of the same girl every time. Oh, wow. So, you know, I don't want to be a narc. But at this point, at this point, it's a little distracting. It's a little distracting and... I think maybe, maybe she could use a little suspension. Well, some days to cool off, maybe? I don't know. We got some retro viewer art. <gasps> this is from Potatoes Molasses back in high school. Ooh! Very nice. Monochromatic. Yeah, what's the deal with the person who keeps being behind all this, all this Anger. drama while you're all? Anger issues. Oh, yeah. I think it's anger issues. Nope, and there's no place for it at beauty no. school. There's no place for that at beauty school. Sorry. Sorry. Someone had to say it. LED Light has the suggestion to form a beauty school dodgeball team to blow off some steam. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. What do you think the mascot would be if you if you made a whole dodgeball team? A hair. I like it. Mm-hmm. The beauty school hair. Yes. The one single hair. But that would be cool. And face off against rival beauty schools. I think you could defeat the fighting follicles. Yeah. I think so. Sure could. And Alice wants to know if you have a favorite Taylor Swift song. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I have never gotten into Taylor Swift. And I predict, I predict that I will get into Taylor Swift in about 10 years. I've just seen it happen. I've seen it happen. You know, I'll be like, oh, that band, that popular thing? Ugh, no thanks, what a snooze. 10 years later, I'm like, you know who's actually pretty good? So I predict that will happen with her. Yup. How 
do you guys feel about Taylor Swift? Do you like her and her songs? And are you like, Mary, what are you waiting for? You gotta listen to such and such song. Alice is a pop queen. Alice is a pop rocker. Alice is a pop rocker. Alice is a pop rocker now. Yeah, it's a good bumper. It sounds um, a little bit... The bumper sounds a little bit Aruba, Jamaica. Ooh, I wanna take ya. Sound off in the comments. Do you think it sounds a little bit Aruba, Jamaica? Ooh, I want to take you. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's sort of where I'm at too. You know, I just haven't gotten into her, but I, I, I'm, I see, I see with my own eyes that plenty of people with good taste like her. So that also leads me to believe that I will get into her in a few years. Patrick H. Willems recently did a whole video about her as a filmmaker. Now that she like directs her music videos and all of that, and that the, how that's developed over time, and she's about to do a feature as a director too. Interesting. Alice, I would love a playlist. I've been um, writing a little something about Harry Styles, and I think I might make a infotainment video about it. Let me see. I think in my notes app I have stuff about it. Okay, so I just have a small, a small little baby paragraph in my notes. <clears throat> I worry that Harry Styles' musical genius will not be appreciated until he has gone fully bald. And even then, people will still think him too handsome to be taken seriously. And then, you know, it's sort of, in this essay I will type thing about um, how I think he, he, I think he does a lot of stuff that I'm like, oh, wow, what a reference. Wow, this guy really has cool taste. This guy is really making like prog. He's making prog music. This is so cool. This is like. I don't listen to Spoon, but from what I know about Spoon, I think he makes music like Spoon. If you're familiar with Spoon and you're not familiar with Harry Styles, I think Harry Styles might sound like Spoon. Um, he just makes, you know, avant, avant-garde pop, prog pop, and he makes really cool stuff, and, you know, you see, I'll see his, you know, vids on YouTube, and all the comments are just like, marry me, I love me, like, I just feel like, I feel like some people, I mean, he won a Grammy, okay? He won a Grammy, he won a Grammy. So obviously he gets recognition. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about hip, hip people. Hip tastemakers. I feel like not enough hip tastemakers are on board. I think they think he's a little cringe because he was in a boy band and because his lyrics aren't that good. And because his music videos are not that good. But it's the music, okay? I never said the guy was a visual storyteller. A great, a great songwriter, I think. That's what I'm worried about. That's what I'm worried about. It's so good, and you know, I just, I think, 
I think a lot of people would benefit by listening to his music a little more. They might be like, oh, this is cool, and I like this. This is cool, and I like this, and I, and I think he's referencing some stuff that I um, like. Apparently TikTok for a while just decided he was bald and that he was hiding it. Could be. There's no evidence. They just sort of decided. I worry. I worry a little bit that he might, you know, get hair plugs. And, you know, he can. He can. You know, who am I? Who am I? A hairdresser to begrudge someone getting hair plugs. I should be thrilled for someone to get hair plugs. But I think the man's gotta go bald. He's receding. If, if you can't, yeah. if you don't really know what he looks like, he's, he has this action, this thing that People get. You got a little bit of that action. Probably gonna be bald pretty soon. Gonna be bald pretty soon. He's got that going bald soon look about him. Is he wearing a hairpiece already? Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. I feel like I could see it. He has denied it as of as of 2022. Not that he would admit it, but he's ha it's gotten to the point where he's had to deny it. <laughs> wow. Okay, this was someone's Photoshop <laughs> of bald Harry Styles. This is from uh, someone on Twitter named Aaron. It's beautiful. Does look very Lex Luthor. Uh, and Butt's pointing out that if he denied he was going bald, he must have supplied it. So. Mm. Mm hmm. I mean, hairline like that, gotta, gotta be bald within, what do you think, three years? I gave him three years. Bald. It could be three years, yeah. And then maybe people will actually listen. There are stem cell treatments now, so he may never happen. No. Harry, you gotta go bald. What if he shaves it for like a movie or something? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I I think I think he should do that. This is Mary Houlihan's prophetic party. Mm-hmm. Bing, bing, bing. 
I think he should definitely go bald. I think he'd be following, you know, a long line of bald British pop hit makers. Phil Collins. Mm hmm. Is Peter Gabriel bald? Feels bald. He is bald. Is Steve Winwood A, bald, and B, British? Feels like both, but I'm actually not sure. First, here's Peter Gabriel. Where is a good Peter? There's a good Peter Gabriel showing off the bald, and oh, I yeah, think <laughs> the British. That's bald. Okay. Steve Winwood is English, but is not bald. Mmm. Okay, so we're gonna have to keep Harry Styles away from him. Yeah, you don't want Harry. You want Harry to go more in this direction, not the yes. Winwood direction. No. You know, Harry Styles has a pretty good vid, pretty good vid on YouTube. A cover of Sledgehammer on the Howard Stern Show. It's a good cover. It's a good cover. I recommend it. Ooh. Oh, and Alice has made the playlist for you. Nice. And blog pointing out you're really wanting him to become unhairy styles. Mm-hmm. 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 I mean, I know he has at least one Grammy. He's got, you know, zillions of fans. But if he just listens to me, he could have, you know, some nerds in Brooklyn also like him. <laughs> Which, you know, it's probably really important to him. It's probably really oh, important. Yeah. And Alice wants it. to know if you saw Don't Worry, Darling. I didn't. I didn't. Did you? No. I got the vibe it was bad. Yeah, maybe skip that one if you like Harry Styles. You know, I just okay. I think I think he's I think he's a fabulous musician. I don't have a lot of faith in his acting abilities, I gotta say. I just I just don't see it. There's weirdly a scene where he dances for like four or five minutes straight. That's too much dancing. Uh, too much dancing for someone to do in a movie. Sorry. That's just how I feel. Yup. Welcome. You got hairstyle pilled. Um, so like, have you guys been watching um, The Righteous Gemstones? I have. So good. Such a good show. So good. What the hell? I'm glad it's been renewed. Mm-hmm. What, what a season. Such a great season. It seems like, okay, sure Dubs is saving it, so we should dodge some of the spoilers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But most people, a lot of stuff, LED lights watching it, Butts Janitals watching it. Alice has listened to most of the first season while getting a tattoo once. Hmm. I like the, um, the cousin performances. They, they were great. The cousins were great. 
I thought oh. Steve Zahn was really good. Oh yeah. That's, but I mean, I'm always also I always love Baby Billy. Oh, and Goggins of knocks out of the park every time. Mm-hmm. And it was great to see Kristen Johnson, Johnston yeah. again. Loved her on Third Rock. I loved her in Austin Powers too. Oh yeah. Um. So Walton Goggins, had he sung before before the show? Do you know? I feel like I always think that whenever he's singing on it, and I'm like, he's good. Not even like, oh wow, what a great vocalist, but uh, a great performer. He's so like, good. Though. Yeah. I wonder if that was brand new to him, or maybe he's done that before in his career. I don't know. I don't see anything clearly being musical before that. And I was also thinking, well, he's so, I mean, I'm sure like the dentures or mouth guard or whatever he's wearing helps, but he is so good at like old guy voice yeah. and old guy mannerisms, like having a sort of labored gait, straight leg walking type thing. I mean, what? So, so many talented folks. It's funny when you realize how little that prosthetics they do do mm -hmm. to Walton Goggins to make him look old and how much it really is just how he carries himself and yeah. then the hair. And the dentures or whatever, but... I think he's wearing dentures, right? I or think is so. That, or is that... Uh... Oh yeah, and Things from the Void is avoided gemstones because they usually don't like McBride or Divine, but the Zon Man is in it. Yeah, the Zon Man's in the current, the most recent season. Wow, I'm. I get. I get Divine. I feel like he, <laughs> pun intended, redeems himself in this, because I mean, could could you blame him? Kind of a cute looking guy. In was on workaholics in his early twenties or something. You could see how they just want to cast him in a zillion things and have him be big. Um, that I think when given an opportunity to do kind of a more interesting role or more complicated role. I think I think he does a good job. I think he does a good job. And that uh, the stunt performer son. Great acting oh, chops. Yeah. I mean come on, let's face it. A lot of good actors. Yeah, Come Gideon. on. Come on. Come on. So yeah, I, I get I get one's reticence about Adam Divine. Full disclosure, I don't totally know what reticence means. I'm just uh, guessing that it means apprehension. Yeah. But, but yeah. But That's I'm, accurate. I'm surprised. I'm surprised that you don't love Danny McBride. I mean, maybe you've just seen him in, you know, Pineapple Express or This Is the End. But you know, watch, watch him in things that he has, you know, written, or you know, in you know, Foot Fist Way or Eastbound. And I, and I know the Kenny Powers Loudmouth Jerk character, 
But I think when you see him in things where he has a writer or directorial ownership to some degree, um, I think what he he seems more artistic and not just like oh this this guy always is a dumb guy with a southern accent you know just, I think he does these kind of complex characters yeah yeah in fact, maybe that's why they, uh, maybe that's why they cast Adam Devine. Maybe Danny McBride saw himself in that, or maybe had seen stuff that he was in and thought, like, this actor seems kind of deep, but he's in all these, uh, you know, cash grab type roles that what are you gonna do what are you gonna do turn down pitch perfect you're not gonna turn down pitch perfect no you're not gonna turn down pitch perfect you're not gonna turn it down we got some reviewer art sign me up this is from Noah, a.k.a. Embroider Ugg. Oh, that's nice. Look at that widow's peak. You know, I gotta admit, I gotta admit, I gotta come clean. I'm feeling pretty good about this face. I'm feeling pretty good about this face. So much so. I'm scared to put in the eyes. I'm honestly a little bit, oh, I don't want to mess it up. I mean, I know I can just cover it up if it looks wonky. But I'm honestly a little scared to put in the eyes. And Chuck, Chuck on gemstones. What a pair of poppers. What a pair of poppers that actor has wow and ears poppers and ears i mean what an expressive face yeah Boy, yeah they, they know how to cast them they know how to cast them both the cousins were so well cast yes not to be a bitch but good job um Hmm. Well, and then the, the big set that was featured in the last episode, the big TV set was so good. That was very Just, cool. Ah. Oh, and I love that actor who played Steven. Steven, the guitarist. Oh, yeah. That was very funny. And 
the actor is also Steven. There you go. Steven Schneider. It was also great getting those the, uh, the pop in with Casey Wilson in a couple episodes. Yes, and what a what a great haircut. Yeah, it's a great haircut. Oh, uh, and Butts Channel is saying some real balls out acting from that guy. Yes. <laughs> Oh, and LED Light has a question. Mary, did you have a favorite Pee-wee's Playhouse character besides Pee-wee? Mm, maybe Cherry. I mean, Cherry is a great choice. Terry. Cherry Terry. and Terry. Both great choices. Oh, yeah, the reason we put up curtains in our living room is because of the Sea and Righteous Gemstones, where... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's all hanging out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like we need, we need curtains. Punky. Cowboy Curtis always jumps to mind for me, but I also. Mm -hmm definitely saw Cowboy Curtis more after I had seen The Matrix mm. and so that made Cowboy Curtis really like uh, lock into my memory more I think Totes what an expressive face you know before the show started and i was just chatting with forrest and i was looking on google images at pics of pool as peewee and i was just laughing out loud just looking at google images because he is so expressive just looking at still pics of someone and truly loling that says something. It's true. That says something. I do love Conky's design. Um, and I'll, I'll screen share it for folks who don't know. sitting my good friend Coda Coda I believe was on the mole episode yeah I think so I think it was that one 
Mm-hmm. Now that's a good pooch. Butt's genitals says it's a long weekend there, so they're going to hang out with their family and chase after their three-year-old niece all weekend. Very nice. And then Things from the, Things from the Void is going to a Lollapalooza after show to see the garden tomorrow night. Cool. And Noah is going to their cousin's place to watch gymnastics. Very nice. And I know Things from the Void is the musical guest on a, on it, the Eric Germs Eric Extravaganza tomorrow on Twitch. Mm. And Emily and I will be on too. Very nice. Oh, but Sir Ive has a good question. Mm. Which is where at uh, the Eric Durham thing is uh, Eric Stravaganza is tomorrow at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. But what's happening right now is I hope you're hungry for dinner. Ah! 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 Well, folks, it's time to play the most exciting game in the world. What, what did I eat for dinner? Yep, it's anyone's guess. Salad? Nope. Mm -mm. It was not grilled dinner. It was not mac and cheese. It was not frozen peas. <laughs> it's not, it's not eggs. It's not burrito. It's not stew. It's <laughs> it's not it's not tater tots. Hmm. It's not tater tots. It's not nachos. It was French fries. The answer is French fries. <laughs> French fries, and then later, later I did have a little, a little bit of snack. If you want to guess the snack, uh, or extra credit, I guess. By all means, feel free. Ooh, curly fries, those are good. You know, the snack was not Kit Kat. It was not Kit Kat. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Almost bought a salted caramel Twix today, but then didn't. Oh. But I think I'll buy one soon. Mm-hmm. I want to see what that's all about. Yeah, I don't think I've had that one yet. You know, I've, I've seen it, I've seen it, and I've been tempted, and I say, nah, not, not in the mood today, but I, I want to see what it's all about. Okay, now I'm definitely getting it. Hello, happy. Mmm, yummy. I love s'mores. I love them. I think they're so good. Did you have a different kind of Twix? Mm-mm. Okay. Mm-mm. A little bit of a healthy snack. A petite snack. A petite healthy snack. It was not a tick five. It was not hummus. Pretty petite. It wasn't grape. It wasn't grape, but I feel like grape's on the right track. It was not junior mints. It was a fruit. It was a fruit. 
It was not apple. My snack was not apple. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. My snack was not plum. It was not peach. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Not cherries and not mango. It was not watermelon, it was not raisin. It wasn't frozen peas, it wasn't nectarine. It was fruit, it's fruit. Dates, wasn't dates, it wasn't orange, nah, -uh. nope. Banana, nah. Bananas are so good though. It was blueberries. The answer was blueberries. French fries and blueberries. Yep. Bloob. <laughs> it was bloob. I'm bloob. Yeah, I'm feeling all right. Hi. Hi, Poochie. Hi, Poochie. Hi. Are you baby Poochie? Yeah. You know, when someone guessed girl dinner earlier and I said no, I was like, well, sounds a little bit like girl dinner. I guess to be fair, I don't totally understand what girl dinner is, but I also feel like girl dinner is sort of a je ne sais quoi. It's sort of, a, how could you even explain it, right? It's, I feel like you know it when you see it. Or if you feel like there is a proper definition. <laughs> so I've seen I've seen it been used on TikTok and I've seen I don't know if you guys have seen this there's a viral video of someone saying that like things there's some like people are going too far calling things girl dinner and when some people are posting things that are just not girl dinner they're just posting like regular stuff. So I feel like I need more explanation. A very good question about the blue song because a song that goes I'm good yeah I'm feeling all right it's kind of weird okay yeah okay that checks out that checks out okay okay that checks out Yeah, I would say most of my meals, I'd say maybe half my meals are in the girl dinner category. Where I'm like, this is as many calories as normal dinner. So yeah, I can have a bag of gummies. Parentheses, sour worms. Mm -hmm. I'm good, yeah, I'm feeling all right. Um, where is that? I hadn't realized there really was a remake that was I'm good, I'm feeling all right. I'm good, yeah, I'm feeling all right. It's it's crazy. I can't even believe it. Sounds like a prank. Prank song. They'll never put this on the radio. Wrong. I'm good, yeah, I'm feeling all right. I'm, uh, had the, the best frickin' night of my, and it says frickin'. Can you believe that, Forrest? But they don't say frickin'. 
best freaking night of my life. Whatever it takes, and I'm down to a ride. Don't you know I'm good? Yeah, I'm feeling alright. I'm good. I, what a crazy song. How does the record industry decide what hits are going to be? Because, like, you know, you hear songs like that and you're like, that's not mm -hmm. organic. Someone was like, this is this is going to be on the radio. Make it make it so. And then everyone's like, I guess this is on the radio. I just don't like that the remake, like, abandons the, the whole, all the sci-fi world building of the music video for of Blue. Of course. And it's not, uh, I think it's too similar sounding to Blue. Mm-hmm. They don't really spice it up enough for my liking. It's like, we're just doing that song, but with boring lyrics. Yeah. I like that WWE used the remade version to promote an episode of, like, the 30th anniversary of one of their shows. I'm good, yeah, I'm feeling all right. <laughs> Wow, it peaked at number four on the Billboard Hot 100. Wow. That's so stupid. That is. I remember when Blue was on the radio. <laughs> I, I was a little girl. Probably about nine years old. Elementary school. They played on the radio. I'd say, now this... Now, this is an interesting song. What is this fella singing about? If he was green, he'd be what? Times were different back then. If I was green, I would die. Wow. What a cute fella. Uh -oh. But speaking of Europop, have you seen Planet of the Bass? Is that the Kyle Gordon thing? Yeah, the parody. That's great. I think yeah. that's so great. It's so fun. Folks, have you seen this? Have you heard of this? It's very good. can't think off the top of my head of any of the lyrics. But, you know, they're crazy. It's a parrot blog. It's a parody of like, I mean, it's sort of parody, but also sort of homage to all the like yeah. '90s Euro pop. Oh, uh, you can just tweet art using the hashtag Mary who Mary painting party. Mm -hmm. And then we'll screen share it right here on the show. Oh, 
Oh yeah, I mean, I guess you can post it on X with the hashtag Merry Painting Party. Wow. So like, what's that about? Elon is just an incredibly divorced man and mm. is rebranding everything to be what he, what a 13 year old would think was the coolest. That's so stupid. I mean, I That's don't fair, have, Noah. I don't have a MBA. I'll admit it. But doesn't Twitter have, um, you know, pretty well established brand recognition? It's in the dictionary Why? under tweet. Would you rename it? That's stupid, right? Am I wrong? Is that not stupid? No, stoopy? it's dumb. Is there it's something dumb. I'm not getting? They lost, yeah, Alice is pointing out, people have said they lost like 10 billion in valuation from the brand change. That's insane. But he's been, he's wanted to have a, a thing named X since so the 90s. Stupid. But you know what's actually what, unlike the rebrand of Twitter, is 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 great. What's great is this viewer art from <gasps> LED LED light. Ooh, tequila. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, I got a little question. You guys ever drink? See anyone drink? Or merely heard of? Takiza? No. Harry, my boyfriend, not Styles, says that his mom used to drink something called Takiza and that it's been discontinued. And, you know, we Googled it and looked up Takiza. Huh. And, you know, I have no recollection of Takiza existing. I never, I don't think I ever saw anyone drink it or advertisements for it. I'm seeing it's beer with blue agave nectar and the natural flavor of lime. Wow. Gotta get me a tequila. Someone on Reddit said, the only beer my dad has ever liked was Tequiza, which is now out of business. But it was more of a fun, like, a fun drink. Mm -hmm. And not very beer tasting. Mm -hmm. Compared it to Zima. Mm. Alright, I gotta get some Tequiza. It looks like it was discontinued in 2009. Gotta get to Kiza. Mm -hmm. yeah, here's a better look at it from Thrillist. Ooh. It was a fruit beer. Oh, and then after that, they'd launched a Culto, which was a tequila flavored beer. Whoa. But they're also getting rid of that, so. That's interesting. I hadn't heard of it at all. We gotta get Takiza. I think they were just, I mean, yeah, it is similar to that, but I don't think it's a seltzer in, I think it's just was being compared to Zima as like a fruit flavored beer alternative from the nineties. And yeah, it is weird that they didn't keep the Tequiza name for the tequila flavored one. But there's agave in Tequiza. And it's I mean, supposed to be a Corona a killer. Name. We love to just order it. Just get to say it out loud a little bit. It's a fun thing to order. 
Is that so wrong? Oh. You, you, can't, you can't order it on eBay from what I can tell, but you can buy this inflatable bottle. <laughs> There's also Jesus. a sign, which is perfect for your man cave. Yes. There's a poster. Apparently the name is a combo of tequila and oh. cerveza. What else oh. we got here? Ooh, yeah, here's a light up sign. I was unsure about the letter Z, but that checks out. Pinata. Okay. Pinata. Takiza is alive and well. Neon beer sign. Pint glasses. That's practical. How much are some of these? Um, the signs are pretty expensive. The pint glasses are ten dollars with tw with eighteen dollars shipping, so like thirty. Hmm. Um, oh, here's one for five. Looks like everyone's right. getting Takiza merch for Christmas this year. He's a terrace. And yeah, that looks like the motto was give it a shot. Ooh. I like that. I think you gotta go with the inflatable beer bottle. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Wow. Tequis Navidad. Tequis Navidad. It is made by Anheuser-Busch, so we could petition them to bring it back. Yeah. Come on. Hmm. I did see that Simply Juices makes spiked versions now. Ooh. I saw um, Spiked Sunny D at the liquor store the other day. And I said, mm, That's wild. Should I? And then I said, no. No, I do not need that in my home. The website for the Sunny D vodka seltzer specifically goes, wait, but isn't Sunny D a kid's drink? Wow. I said, well, not this one. Basically. Not this one. Not this one. Not this one. Ha ha ha. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 
Thank you, Noah. I think, honestly, I honestly think it's time to walk the dog and go to bed. Is that so wrong to say? Ciao, Bella. Thank you, Blogtoven. Well, good night, everybody. I'll see you next Thursday. And another scorcher. Cool. Thank you, LED light. Thank you, Forrest and Alice. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And all of your art is so good. Every single art, I was like, no way. But then someone would make another one, and I'd be like, no way! That was pretty much my vibe. Poocher? Hello, Poocher. Hi. Yeah, that's right. You're just a baby pooch. That's right. Yeah, you're just a baby pooch. That's right. Everybody knows that. Yeah. Mm -hmm.